here's Marduk, the chief god of Babylon. Uh, and here you can see his uh, fire-breathing dragons. Uh, fire-breathing dragon. Okay. How, how many believe in fire-breathing dragons? Can I see your hands? One. Okay. We've got to stop here a minute. <clears throat> Has anybody ever seen or heard of an animal called the bombardier beetle? The one that can set off 200 explosions per second and scare off the frog that's ready to eat them. Uh, can I see your hands? Okay. Um, has anybody ever heard of an electric eel that can generate 600 volts of electricity that when you're swimming, you step on the electric eel and he can shock you and make you wish you hadn't gone swimming that day. Anybody ever hear of the electric eel? Has anybody ever seen in his lifetime an animal called the firefly or lightning bug? That's the one that's got a flashlight on its tail that points to where it's been. I don't know why. But about every night in the summertime, about the time it gets dark, you see the woods full of them. How many of you ever saw lightning bugs? Okay, how many have ever seen cows? Cows that eat green grass. Do you know how would you feel at the end of a day if you had been eating green grass all day? I think I would do just like cows do, and I think I would belch up methane gas like they do. You know cows belch methane gas, don't you? Isn't methane gas just like propane and butane? Isn't it a flammable gas? Hmm. How many believe cows can belch methane gas as a byproduct of eating grass? See your hands? How many believe that you serve a God that is capable of creating an animal that can set off 200 explosions per second, that can generate uh, 600 volts of electricity in the electric eel, that can uh, uh, put a flashlight on the back end of a, a little firefly, and who can create a cow that belches methane flammable gas, how many believe that your God is capable of putting something in the animal's mouth that can set off that flammable gas, uh, uh, like a spark plug, and make it explode? Can I see your hands? If you all vote for it, we won't be here all night, because if I have to tell this whole story again, I need everybody to vote. Yes, okay, got it. It's critically important. Rejoice not thou, whole Palestina, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. For out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. You see, it is Isaiah, who I think it was in chapter 9, said, there is a Savior coming. Ooh, oh, okay. There's a Savior coming. That's really good to hear. Um, er, uh, wait a minute. But does Isaiah tell fairy tales? Here, I have to defend my scripture. What did Paul do when he went to some place? He argued, uh, reasoned with the brethren about the reasonableness of his position. And we need to be able to defend our faith. And here is Isaiah talking about a fiery flying serpent. Well, if I do not believe in fiery flying serpents and the reasonableness of their existence at the time of Isaiah, I'm going to have trouble defending Isaiah's statements about my Savior. So it is critically important that we teach our kids science in our Sunday schools because they're not getting the right science in the government schools. Isaiah 9, 6. 
For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. If I do not believe this verse in Isaiah, I have no greater reason to believe this one. Quite frankly, it is easier for me to believe in a fiery flying serpent than the prediction of somebody a thousand or two thousand years later being born to save me. It is crucial that we take scripture literally. Out of his, Leviathan's mouth go burning lamps and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils goeth smoke as out of a seething pot or cauldron. His breath kindleth coals and a flame goeth out of his mouth. This is the way it reads in your Bible. Except. No human being has ever seen a live dinosaur. Hmm. Guy must not have read the Bible. The ancient city of Babylon uh, in its walls uh, recently excavated many images of dragons in the walls. Why? Maybe it's because people were familiar with dragons at the time. Alexander the Great reported that when he conquered parts of what is now India in 326 B.C., his soldiers were scared by the great dragons that lived in caves. This is a Roman mosaic showing two long-necked dragons in the second century. St. George slaying a dragon in 275 A.D. Beowulf slew many dragons and was killed while fighting a winged dragon in 583 A.D. at age 88. The story says Beowulf killed Grendel the dragon by pulling off one of its small front arms and the creature bled to death later. Apparently that small front arm is loosely attached, easily removed or torn off in battle and uh, uh, causing them to bleed to death. Uh, which is why you see so many evidences of people in fighting of uh, dragons uh, going after the upper arm. This is a long-necked creature found on a hippo tusk, 12th century B.C. in Egypt, Bangkok, Thailand, Russian medallion, Bulgarian postage stamp. In 900 A.D., an Irish writer told of an animal with iron nails on its tail and a head similar to a horse. It also had thick legs and strong claws. Viking ships often had a dragon head. Why would ships have dragon heads put on them. Simple. Because they wanted to scare off dragons that were in the sea. Because the sea was full of uh, things that were harmful. It was not just pretty decorative. It was out there. Has anybody ever heard of a uh, scarecrow? put it out near a corn patch or something to scare the birds away like a pretend person out there. Well, maybe that was out there for the same reason. Siegfried slaying the dragon Fafnir. According to Norse legend, the dragon guarded a treasure in the land on Neda Head. Marco Polo lived in China for 17 years around 1271 AD and reported that the emperor raised dragons to pull his chariots in parades. In 1611, the emperor appointed the post of royal dragon feeder. Books even tell of Chinese families raising dragons to use their blood for medicines and highly prizing their eggs. The city of Nerluc, France was renamed in honor of the dragon slain there. It was described as being bigger than an ox and having long, sharp, pointed horns on its head. Indian pictograph from the Grand Canyon. Oh, by the way, what are pictographs? Indian kids drawn on the walls. So nothing's new. Any uh, Kids have been doing that for years, huh? Uh, in Utah, in Australia, in Canada. Uh, why do people make images on walls unless, huh, maybe they saw live dinosaurs? In uh, Cambro, Mexico, uh, images like these were found of dogs, horses, cats, cows, etc. I just have pictures here of the dinosaur types. Uh, there were about 56,000 of these found in that town. 